Everyone, it's Ross, and we just got another boatload of figs, guys. It's going to rain tomorrow and the next day, maybe even the next day after that. So I wanted to get these off the tree, especially if some of them had some cracking in it. Maybe they were split just a, just a hair. I wanted to get them off. I don't want mold to form. I don't want to attract SWD and things like that. So we've got a number of these varieties today. And just yesterday, we filmed a video with my buddy Chris and Simon, and we had 15 varieties. Today, we have 14 varieties, but uh, this is kind of the fig season. This is like a normal thing um, that we're just getting on, you know, right about now. And some of these are quite incredible. You can see from the, I guess we'll go from left to right. That makes more sense. This is Galicia Negra. This here is something called Nalaga, and you can see they're quite similar. I mean, they're not exactly the same, but they certainly are a similar type of fig that I like to call uh, a black mission type. This is here is a Mega Celeste. We have the Daloso that's not muled right now. This is Dr. Gawadi. This here is the Trace of Splace. We have something called Jade. This is a Coldenon Blanca Negra. We have Azores Dark. We have right next to it another hardy Chicago type. This one's called Vibo Valencia. We have Violet Sapor, LSU Red, LSU Tiger, aka Calderwood Unknown, and then this here is Paradiso. And they're all really tasty. Quite tasty figs, but I don't think the quality today is really with us. And it's a shame because we keep picking these a bit too soon, but we're going to get some nice quality, I think, hopefully maybe in about a week maybe two weeks i think that's honestly where we're gonna have to wait and get most of our quality from um you know we're really just trying to go for dry spells here and it just hasn't happened for us even in our bravest season there was a few dry periods very few but um we haven't really had enough dry periods this year and as a result the quality hasn't been there it's we also had some inconsistent watering um, things got a bit too dry with the, the lack of mulch that we had on our pots. And then to compensate, I overwatered and some things split and some things dropped because we didn't have enough water. Now we have a real consistent, even watering that's happening. And we should have uh, quality coming in soon. That's, uh, of, of, at least in my perspective, my experience, a higher quality. Um, what I like to look for here, guys, in a fig is something that is rain resistant and split resistant and also has a really nice flavor that can ripen relatively early. If it can't ripen early, it ripens later in our season, you know, probably in about a month from now or maybe uh, two or three weeks from now. It has to be rain resistant. Otherwise our rain just comes in too soon and we just don't get the quality. Um, so a lot of these figs, believe it or not, either got a, a greenhouse head start or they're just early enough to ripen now. And um, we'll go kind of go over the differences there and which of these got a head start and which of them didn't. Um, the scaling system I like to use for the taste, the taste rating is from zero to five. Zero, you know, or I should say one to five. One is something, a fig that I really don't like. Didn't really, it didn't probably didn't ripen properly or it's just horrible. Um, a two is probably a step up from that. Three is, is, is like a real, I would say two is a good Breba. Three is a fig that is of really good quality. And um, I know it's, it's three out of five, but a three out of five to me means a lot more than what you might think. Like a three out of five is only a 60%. But uh, that is a really high score for me. Um, even higher is a four. And I don't have many four out of fives out of the hundreds, couple, I have about 200 varieties outside. Of the 200 varieties, I have maybe only 10 varieties that are four out of fives. Um, and then I only have two varieties that are five out of five. So I don't think any of them on this plate here are gonna be five out of five, so we won't even have to really worry about that. But, um, Let's kind of get started here. So we first have Galicia Negra, and Galicia Negra, again, is really, has every characteristic, the shape, the size, 
the skin, um, the lots of seeds in the fig as well. Even the way that the tree performs and acts is a lot like a black mission type. And there's so many black mission types. And maybe I, there's a few on my list in my spreadsheet that are not exactly a black mission. And uh, I should go back and correct some of those. But definitely, I mean, look, look at this. Compare these two figs. They're almost the same, even on the outside. I'm sure they taste very similar. The difference here is in the interior, and that's kind of where Galicia Negra really shines. Um, it has a darker red interior, but I already know that I'm not going to like this fig. This is the first fig off of this tree ever that I've ever ripened, and um, I already know that I'm not really going to like it. And the reason for that is that it has really long and many acnes, many female flowers within the fig. Any fig can have up to, I don't know, you could say 100 to 500. I, I don't really know exactly, but this one has a ton. And you can very visibly see it. And it's going to be a very juicy fig, a very meaty fig. It's going to have a texture that's not very fine. It's very kind of like eating um, some citrus. And the citrus, you can kind of feel the individual vesicles when you bite into a navel orange. They have these individual vesicles that hold the the juice sacs. And it's the same thing with this in my mind is that you can almost feel the individual pieces, the individual flowers of the fig. Whereas a fig maybe like my Azores Dark is really thick and very jammy and it seems like one piece, one fig, very uniform. Same thing with the Col de Dames. So I already know that I'm not really going to like this too much. Maybe I like the flavor. Let's try it. So, even though it has all these acnes in it, it's actually quite thick, and I actually really like it. Um, it's got a pretty good flavor to it. Not as intense berry as I would have thought. It's a more mild berry. I think that's what most of these Black Mission types are, is they have a mild berry flavor. And there's some caramel in there. There's some interesting sweetness maybe a syrupy flavor to it, maybe like a maple syrup flavor. Um, it's good. It's not the best fig I've ever eaten. Not as good as you go further up, probably because this fig could probably use maybe, if it was going to be perfect, maybe another day or two. Um, but it's still like pretty much where you want it at this point. It seems to have a nice body to it. It doesn't really seem to, you know, be subject to too much manipulation and all that. It's not a bad fig, really. It's not. But I'm not gonna. I'm not going crazy for it. And if it doesn't improve from this point, I'm actually gonna get rid of it this this fall. This here is um, Malaga, another Black Mission type. And these Black Mission types. They all behave very similarly in, term, in terms of their growth. They just take a long time to bear. And they're quite rain resistant. They're split resistant for the most part. So they're pretty good in my climate, but they're usually more on the mid season area, not usually that early. And um, they can really take a long time to bear, sometimes even three or four or five years because they grow quite vigorously and the vigor doesn't slow down enough for them to fruit. So this is something called Nalaga. Let's try it. It's almost as good as Galicia Negra, but I think Galicia Negra has an edge in there. This one you can really feel the more of the um, the female flower parts, the acnes in there. It's not as uniform. Um, I would say Galicia Negra is a 3 out of 5, and I would say Delag is a, probably a 2 out of 5, approaching a 3. Here we have um, something called Mega Celeste, and I'm really tired of eating this fig, to be honest with you. We did it in the last video. It's just not a tasty fig, guys, and it really is subject to the rain here. It has even bigger acnes than the black mission types I just showed you. You can see the white little strands in here. Those are the acnes. Um, and it just, there's a lot of them. 
uh, they're large. It's just not a fig that really is all that great, but let's, let's just take a bite. A little bit of berry flavor in there, more on the mild side. You know, it's sweet, but it's not an interesting sweetness. It's not like um, something from like some kind of nectar or something from some interesting type of sugar. You know, it's just got a standard figgy, melon, mild berry flavor. It really doesn't do well in the rain here, unfortunately, and it splits a lot. The skin really doesn't allow it to do well here. Um, that's a fig I'm definitely getting rid of um, this fall. So here we have um, the Daloso, and it's a really beautiful exterior to this fig. Really something special. Um, it's it's just very gorgeous. It's it's striking to be honest with you. This is one of the more beautiful figs I think I've ever ripened. Um, the inside I don't the inside to me is indicating that this particular Daloso tree. I have a couple of these. I have one in the ground. This one we grafted and it doesn't look that mature to me. I think this fig is gonna change. So I don't wanna judge this one too harshly. Let's see. It's good. The skin's got an interesting flavor to it. It's not bad. But I don't think the flavor really intensified all that much. I don't think it really is mature all that much. But I would say right at this point, it's still a three out of five for me. Even last year on the tree I had in a container, but we just put it in the ground. Um, that one actually was a three out of five as well. So far, I think Alicia Negra has, the, has a slight edge on, on the rest of these so far. Here's Dr. Gawadi and I just cannot pick this fig correctly, it seems like. I really need to be more patient with it. But the ants are kind of getting into this side here. And if I let this hang out in the rain, we're gonna get mold in here and we're gonna get all kinds of issues to be honest with you. And I don't really wanna to have to deal with that. Um, so far, this fig has not been as tough as I thought it was. There's some crunch in there. Quite mild, not as watery or not as bland as it has been in the past, but this is a fig that, just like white Triana, which is one of my favorite figs, has to ripen for an extremely long time. It has to be on the tree when it starts to swell, has to ripen for nine to 15 days before I, I would consider it really good. Um, the longer you can let it hang, the better, and I've seen it in different forms of this, different figs, not just um, Dr. Gawadi. I've seen it really get all kinds of nectar, either dripping from the eye or even coming out the sides of the skin. Um, I've also seen white Triana just really get a nice thick texture that is really hard to beat. Um, this one is just not up to my standards. It's extremely juicy, very juicy, quite watery, quite mild. When you let them ripen, they'll thicken up a bit. They'll lose some of that water and they'll actually, um, they can normally hold up to it. So I'm surprised Dr. Gawadi's not. It's, very, it's a very productive fig. And it seems like an early to mid season fig. I was shocked. It's ripening now, which means it's been ripening actually. I think I picked maybe three now. So it's been ripening from like mid August onwards. That is a pretty early fig um, with no head start. The figs here that got a head start so far is the Mega Celeste, which is enormously productive, by the way, and seems quite early. It doesn't need a head start. And the uh, Galicia Negra here. Um, so Galicia Negra is actually later than the Nalaga because they're ripening at the same time. Um, yet one got like a month and a half head start than the other one, which is crazy. Um, Let's see here, uh, yeah. So even Daloso is quite productive, quite early it seems like. Um, and I'm expecting it to be reasonably hardy. But you know, these figs, they're very different in from day to day, um, year to year. Some of them are more less consistent than others and it's a bit of a shame. This is my Detrasis Place. 
And this is a very, very early fig. In fact, it's kind of drying on the tree and it looks beautiful. Uh, this is the first one of the year. We chopped it back quite heavily and honestly, um, I don't think it produced very well because of that. So, you know, it's a bit behind this year, but it's not the end of the world. We'll see if it really lives up to the standards of last year. And also, my friend Maddie really loves this fig. He got this for me. So shout out to Maddie. Let's try it. Very soft fig. Oh wow. It's good. It's almost um I think it's about as good as last year for me. But it really does. He I mean he's right in that it does taste a lot like RDB. It's very it's quite complex. It seems like a very soft sack of fig gel almost. It doesn't seem very too jammy. I don't know if I describe it as jammy. Extremely soft. Um, I would say that one's again a three out of five. Dr. Gawadi being maybe a two. I think it's a two out of five. Let's keep moving on. This is Jade and I can't really seem to get this fig to ripen perfectly. This one's from Portugal. Um, yeah, I just can't really seem to get it to ripen that well. And it's this is my second year with the tree. Um, the first year we couldn't really say much about it. To you know, I actually thought it was maybe even mislabeled, just because I may have I thought I screwed up. But uh, it definitely seems to appear to be correct this year. And not only that, it got a head start in the greenhouse. It seems quite productive. We're just going to need to let this one mature. I think that's just how it is. This one is probably not the greatest representation. It seems soft, but this, but it wasn't as nice as I thought it was going to be. You can see some sugar spots here on the bottom. We're going to have to let that really, this, this figure. So the next one here is actually to trace this place. And my buddy Maddie gave me this one. He really raves about it. And I know he loves it. It's so early. It's one of the earliest figs. Um, um, to be honest with you, it's actually quite complex and I'm hoping it lives up to last year, uh, last year's standards. I hope it gets better over time. We chopped it back pretty heavily um, this past winter and I regret that for a lot of my trees because they just don't produce as well. They're not as early. Um, so this one here for sure I think would have been quite, as, quite early, probably in the beginning of August as it was last year. Um, there would have been a lot more figs on it. So let's try it. Let's see if it lives up to, to last year here. Very, very soft. Some nice sweetness in there. And it's pretty complex. It's got a nice little berry flavor to it. I'm not the biggest fan of it. Um, maybe it just needs to mature a bit more. Maybe we need to get more figs off of that tree a bit later in the season. But for me, it actually does taste quite a bit like RDB. Ron de Bordeaux, uh, as Matt has described in the past, but I think RDB is a better fig, personally. Um, but you know what? It's extremely early. We actually just put one in the ground and it's fruiting, which is kind of crazy. I rooted a cutting, put the rooted cutting in the ground. It grew for a bit and then I pinched it. It's extremely productive. It's, it's, it's just stupidly early. Um, it'll produce three crops for you in a warm or a long season climate. Um, it produces a Braba, a first main, and a second main. It's kind of nuts. Um, this is a Pons variety. I'm happy to have it, to be honest with you. I just hope the flavor improves. I've had some off Matt's tree that were actually pretty damn good. And Matt loves it, so we'll see how it goes. Um, this is the Jade Fig here, and this is one that I just have had a really hard time getting this thing to ripen. Um, ripen well. It just doesn't seem to want to ripen. Uh, one of them earlier this year fell off, um, probably due to some lack of water. Uh, last year we had just grafted it, so it was pretty young at that point. I actually thought it was mislabeled. This year I had the first, this is the first fig off of this tree, and the first fig off of the tree is always never really that great of a representation, but I think I'm going to have to honestly just wait. We're going to have to let this one mature a bit, really figure it out. Um, so yeah, let's, let's see if it, it, um, if it improved at all since last year. I 
It's got some pretty good flavor. The skin's very bitter though. And that's telling me that it's just not mature. Um, so I think we'll just have to wait on that one. But I would say if that one actually is maybe even a three, out of, it's, it's probably a two out of five actually. The Trace Displace is a three. Dr. Gawadi is a two. Um, I don't know if I mentioned that those two yet. This is a Coldenom Blanc and Negra, and it just didn't ripen properly. I don't know why. It's very soft on the exterior. It seems ready, uh, but I think this actually is going to be good no matter what. I actually think it's going to be good. This I've had a few figs off of this tree so far. All the Coldenoms are so so good. This one is very different though. Yeah, it's actually still not that bad. It's it's quite sweet, and it has an interesting sugarness to it, an interesting sugar flavor. Not very berry. It's really just straight sugar, but it, the sugar is quite interesting, kind of like a light berry fig combined with some sugar. It's quite good, and um, I'm happy to have it, to be honest with you. It's not really your typical cold at um, in my mind, but it's quite thick, just like the other cold at um's. And I like the flavor. Um, here's my Azores Dark. This is an extremely early variety, um, very productive, and it's a hardy Chicago type. But I kind of want to <clears throat> kind of want to stray away from these types. You know, when you when you say, "All right, well, this is a Black Mission type, or this is a hardy Chicago type," because within the type there can be quite variations. Even though they look very similar visually, they actually can be quite different. Like Galicia Negra actually is quite different. And I actually prefer this way more than any other Black Mission type I've ever had. So I think for that reason, I may end up keeping it, but Azores Dark is the same thing. I had um, my buddy Simon and Chris try it yesterday. We actually tried it off camera because I totally forgot that there was a fig ready. And it blew us away. I mean, it was the best fig we had yesterday. Um, maybe Thai, well, I think it was the only four consistently across the board. Um, you know, very, we gave different ratings for different figs, but without a doubt, this one had the consistently a rating of four out of five, and that's where I would put it. I think this fig tastes a lot like Smith. It's just an extreme. It's just so good, guys. There's nothing else really, oh my God, I even got some grape flavor in there, some Concord grape flavor at the end. Um, this was actually off an air layer. We took off many air layers off the tree last year. We propagated some, we sold some. It's a must have fig, guys. And, and honestly, right next to it is another really good hardy Chicago type called Vibo Valencia. This one just doesn't compare. You, it's crazy because you could say everyone who could taste this fig would be like, "Wow, that's really good." But when you taste the source dark, I'm telling you, it's like a totally different fig. Um, well, this one's actually a bit better than um, some other ones I've been having, but it's very juicy. It has a lot of like honey in there, its own nectar that it produces. And it creates this fig that um, is just not as thick. It's not as cold denom esque fine texture, um, dense. I think dense is a really good word to use. It doesn't have that dense, jammy, thick pulp. And for me, that's what separates. It also has an intense berry flavor, the Azor Stark. It just has a more intense flavor. I mean, I really did pick up some grapiness in there at the end. That's pretty nuts. Whereas Vibo, I think, is a sweeter fig. It's quite soft. Um, so is Azores Dark. But it just doesn't have it as much for me. Without a doubt, I think everybody should have some sort of hardy Chicago type. They're just a wonderful fig in almost every climate. Very reliable, very early, very hardy. Rain resistant, split resistant. They got it's got it all. This fig, it's got every characteristic you'd want. Um, 
So for me to be lucky to find one like this, the Azores Dark, I didn't expect it. I'm just happy because I have a number of them now, more of them now, more of these hardy Chicago types that we're going to trial and see if they can beat the Azores Dark. But so far, it's just not happening um, for my taste preferences. Here we have a Paradiso. This is um, from Ciro. And it's a beautiful, beautiful fig, actually. Usually it gets more darker red than this. And I had one that really unfortunately fell off the tree. I didn't even notice it. I had two figs that fell off, I think yesterday, or maybe the day before. And they would have been really tasty because they were quite ripe, but they were just kind of ruined. Um, in fact, I actually have it right over here. You can see how ripe this thing is. And let me, let me just cut it open for you guys and show you the inside. See how much darker red that is? It gets pretty dark red. I haven't seen too much of the complex berry flavor in there um, that I'm ho I was hoping to see. It's more sweet, less berry, but it's nice and thick. It's got a dense pulp in certain areas, certain parts of the fig. Certainly not that one. I think they really need to ripen well. Maybe at a better time of the year. For me, that's a solid three out of five. Um, I think um, in most scenarios, I think that fig is probably number two um, that we've had on this plate, on this, this uh, tasting so far. Um, it's quite good, normally. Um, so here's Calderwood Unknown. This is an LSU Tiger um, that's kind of just been an heirloom for a long time. It's a beautiful fig. It's got Celeste in its parentage, bred by LSU, Louisiana State University. Um, you know, it does really well in the rain. It does, it's pretty early as well. It's seemingly quite hardy, actually. And I have uh, two of them in the ground. And we're gonna plant, I think, another one. Um, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna plant this one in the ground as well, because it's a good fig, but it's not the best fig. And rather than just getting rid of it and not having the production from this tree at all, I think I'm gonna plant it in the ground and we'll have production next year guaranteed. But I'd rather make room for other figs. You yeah. know. Kind of reminds me of a Celeste. You know, it's kind of juicy. It's got some honey in there. It's got some sugar flavors, I guess, in there. And it also has some berry, because you can see it gets quite red. The longer you can let it ripen, the darker red it'll get inside. And that indicates that berry flavor. So it's kind of mild on all fronts. Same thing with the fig right next to it, which is LSU Red. LSU Red also has Celeste in its parentage, also bred by Louisiana State University. Some of them have been much bigger than this. Others have stayed this small. And this one's actually better. I think that one fermented just a tad and it's getting me a little bit of an off flavor. just at the end, but it's got like, um, it's got it all. It's got the sugar, an interesting sugar flavor, a little bit of the honey flavors, a little bit of figginess maybe. And it also has some berry. Actually, it does have some figginess in there. Um, and it's just layered. It's a nice fig, can't complain. But to be honest with you, there's better figs out there than both of them. Um, here is Violette Sapor. This is the first fig ever. This was from a rooted cutting. These, this fig fruits so easily, it's crazy. So I figured I'll throw some in the ground. I figured I'll grow some myself. It's got a nice deep red berry flavor. Beautiful, beautiful fig, flat shape. It's a nice fig and it seems like you could peel it semi easily if you wanted. Mmm, that's good. 
Kind of has a hearty Chicago taste to it. A little fruitier berry. Almost like Socorro Black. Kind of tastes like Socorro Black to me. So, interesting. That is pretty much it, guys, for the figs here. We also have some behind you that we were able to pick that didn't make it on the video, but uh, we just picked quite a bit of figs, guys, today. And I've been really excited by this whole thing. Um, you know, some of these are real rock stars in here. Some of them are just kind of like, meh, but the quality will improve for certain. We're gonna get this Dr. Gawati, there's plenty more. We're gonna get this one to hang on the tree for a super long time. Mega Celeste, <laughs> we're gonna get rid of you. Um, same thing with Jade, we need to get that one to ripen a bit longer. And that's kind of it, guys. That's all I wanted to cover with you guys. I hope you enjoyed this little video here. We'll see you for tomorrow's video, all right? And also, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Check us out on our new website, figboss.com. If you guys know somebody who's interested in growing figs, share these videos with them. Or maybe they do grow figs. This is a pretty interesting little spread here that I don't think many... People who enjoy figs really have ever gotten a chance to do in their lives. So um, this is a real special treat. I mean, it's kind of getting a little ridiculous at this point because this has just become my life. But um, yeah, it's just you really got to put it in perspective and realize just how awesome this is. Okay, guys, take care and we'll, uh, we'll see you soon. All right.